to talk a little bit about racial microaggression, which is definitely a popular topic right now, especially with the events that are going on in the world. Before we get into the, the topic, I want to introduce myself. My name is Brooke Eben. I am a mother of two little girls, and I live here in Houston, Texas. And my motto for life is to enjoy life and to always remember that life is 10% of what happens to yourself and 90% of how you react to it. So my whole motto to life is always to be positive and to make sure that I know that anything, no matter what is happening external to my world, I have the ability to make the choices for myself and what does that mean for my future. I went to Tennessee State University, which is an HBCU in Nashville, Tennessee. So I am a proud tiger. I also went to University of Houston, where I got my MBA in finance. And I work for Dow Chemical. And Dow is a huge supporter for Choose to Do. They have been granted um, a few different grants through Dow. And the work that Choose to Do is doing in the community within Houston is something that's been appreciated and supported by the Dow Chemical Company. I also personally work as a real estate investor and have started transitioning and doing some development in the community, which is a passion for me. And I love to travel. As you can see me on these camels, I'm always all over the place. And most importantly, I love Choose to Do and am on the team as the communication team, helping us to make sure we spread the message of this wonderful organization. So let's get into what is microaggression. You know, when it means and comes to bringing your whole self forward, it can be very challenging to figure out how can I feel comfortable with being who I am. Dealing with microaggression can be exhausting. One can almost equate it to death by a thousand paper cuts. And researchers have found that biological responses to microaggression have implications for motivation and challenges with functioning. At school, trying to understand, you know, colleagues and sensitive comments sometimes can divert your attention from really what matters in the schoolwork. And this diversion can negatively impact your performance. So what does it look like? What is microaggression and what does it mean? Um, have you reacted before? Have you seen microaggressive behaviors? You know, an example of that could be, you know, an, an Asian American. It's not just a black thing or African American. Even, you know, someone who's Asian American or Latino, you know, is very popular sometimes for people to see an Asian American and say, oh, you know, you are, you must be smart at math because you're Asian, <laughs> you know, just assuming you're good at something or assuming, you know, there's a certain level of intelligence just because of your race. It can be on the negative side too. And, you know, saying, hey, you're a credit to your race. You're, you're so articulate, Tommy. And it can make you feel internally like, okay, what are you saying? That, you know, normally, you know, my people are not intelligent. Are we not viewed as having the ability to be perceived in a certain manner? Or it could be something like, hey, where are you from? Where are you born? You really speak good English. Um, you know, almost implying you are not American, you are a foreigner. Um, I've had sometimes circumstances, I grew up in Newark, New Jersey, which is a very urban environment in, in Jersey. And a lot of times when I was starting out working in my professional career, I would be ashamed almost to tell people where I was from, you know, because I didn't want them to have this biased perception of me. And one time I told someone I was from Newark, decided to be honest. And, you know, they was like, wow, you know, you're doing pretty good, you know, from coming from Newark. And it was just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're assuming just because I'm from a black urban environment that I could not be doing good, like I'm an exception um, to the norm. And so, you know, for a time I felt bad, like, you know, hey, I'm not from the cool places, 
in New Jersey. I'm not from the River Oaks of Houston or, you know, all of the, the fun, you know, cool towns that people would, you know, associate as being positive. I didn't feel that way. And those comments made me feel almost invalidated, like I wasn't important or good enough. And so just being cognizant of that and how, how, how that can impact you and how, you know, you may feel when you get some of this behavior and you probably experienced it yourself where you thought, you know, I may not be good enough or I may not um, have that first class citizen right because I did not graduate from the right schools or grow up in the right towns. And those comments can make you feel um, just not validated in who you really are. You know, micro insults are a lot of times offensive without really trying. Like, you know, sometimes someone will say, you may have heard someone say, hey, you're the whitest black person I know, <laughs> or you're not like the rest of them, or you're lucky to be black. It's so easy to get into college. Like, you know, you got into college because you were that one black person that got in on a scholarship, otherwise you couldn't have. Or can I pet your hair, you know? Let me see how that hair feels, that afro feels a little different. <laughs> Um, have you said, heard, or, or had anyone say any of those things before? Really, again, micro insults are a little harder to confront because they are often more subtle form of microaggression. These statements really unintentionally or unconsciously communicate this discriminatory message to members of target race. Think of these statements almost they may have been intended almost as a compliment, but it furthers the message that Black people are different or do not fit the cultural norms. So let's kind of do a little bit of role play. And, you know, with all that's going on with Black Lives Matter and some of these other relative, relevant subjects, one thing you will see, you know, this, this is a current scenario. I actually just experienced this at work myself. Um, just think of an example where a young person, you're in school and your teacher's like, hey, how you doing? And you're like, hey, I'm good. You know, I'm just looking at this app about police brutality. And I have had this happen several times where someone was like, you know, that really isn't that big of a deal. I don't see color. You know, I love black people. You know, hey, maybe they pulled him over because he committed a crime or you know, we're all one human race. We all have to love each other and care. Um, and sometimes when you hear this message, it almost makes you feel like your experience and identity is irrelevant. Because, hey, everyone loves everyone all together, right? When I look at you, I don't see color. It sometimes makes you feel like, hey, the experiences that I have as an African-American in this society, maybe I feel I should feel wrong about feeling this way because hey, everyone loves each other. My thoughts could just be furthering, you know, this feeling that there's, you know, a problem when there really isn't a problem. Maybe I'm creating a problem. And so be co conscious of that um, when you hear that message because it is something that does happen a lot. And even sometimes these micro insults could be surrounding, you know, your level of intelligence, you know. There was a, a friend of mine who went to Harvard Business School, and um, I would, they were not there, but um, I was saying, you know, hey, that, that person went to Harvard Business School, and the response was like, oh, really? Like, how did they get into that school? Like, you know, I'm surprised. As if assuming that a person of color is not intelligent as, you know, their counterpart and did not belong at a private Ivy League college. And this person actually was a very good performer, very intelligent, so it wasn't any reason to believe or associate them in a negative light. It was just more of a, hey, you know what, I don't think they could get into that kind of school. I'm, I'm surprised. Another thing you can think about is, you know, how sometimes as a person of color, you may not feel as respected or perceive, perceived to be in a position of influence just because, you know, people look at you and like, oh, okay, you're, you're not really anybody. 
When I started uh, my first job, I was a engineer at Procter & Gamble, and I had an opportunity to do an assignment. And in that assignment, I had a chance to go to Europe, uh, to Belgium. And I had went out with some coworkers one evening, and the people, there was you know, a few folks from Belgium that was there. They didn't know I was associated with PNG as an engineer. And they didn't want to engage with me. Like the response I got was very cold. Like, who is this child that's sitting in our meeting or standing around? They weren't receptive. And then someone introduced me and said, hey, this is Brooke. She's an engineer working in um, you know, the States. And she's here to help us with this you know, X, Y, and Z. And they were so friendly. They was like, oh, Brooke, how are you doing? Like the demeanor and the response immediately changed you know they were very receptive and it just got me a chance to see okay this is how they viewed me when they didn't know who I was but when the title was given when the presence of working for a well-esteemed company was presented then all of a sudden I was validated as a human being and that made me feel feel bad so I want to show you a video real quickly an example of this Sometimes can be, hey, I, I don't want to appear too black. 
you know, you get around your friends and you feel comfortable with laughing and joking. And I had a friend of mine, she was cracking me up. She was like, yeah, you know, I'm in the car listening to, you know, Tupac. And as soon as I pull up in my, you know, work office, I'm, I turn into classical music. I'm like, oh, 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 let me go inside of work <laughs> and act like I'm, um, you know, one of them. Um, and it cracked me up. But, you know, she was joking, but the reality is true. You know, sometimes you feel like you can't bring your whole self to school or your whole self to work because you think you have to fit a certain image. And it's important to understand that no matter what, you know, these perceptions are, you can truly be who you are authentically and people will receive you better um, when you, one, have confidence in who you are and you're comfortable. People can feel that. Um, is that to say that you can just come in any and all kind of way? Well, then if that's who you are, that might be a problem. <laughs> you always want to put your best foot forward. But that doesn't mean that you being Black is not your best foot forward. Um, being yourself and who you are is very important. And now the next thing I'd like to talk about is from an ally. So think about it. You're thinking, you know what? I feel and understand um, what does this mean, you know, being Black. I sympathize. What are some of the things that I can do to help out? And as an ally, and this is also for those who feel discriminated against, is to, to read, you know, be willing to step outside of your comfort zone. And that goes for even Blacks and African Americans. I have learned so much about different cultures as I travel and respect for those cultures, you know, and what does it mean to be, you know, someone growing up in Kenya or someone going up in Vietnam outside of the perceptions that you see being displayed on TV every day. So reading, being able to talk to people, traveling, these are all things that can help you learn and step outside of your comfort zone. Be willing to listen, um, to receive feedback. Don't automatically push back and say, well, you know, I love Black people, I love Asians. Be willing to, to observe and listen to what they're trying to say. And then be also willing to grow and challenge those biases and assumptions that you have because they're there for everyone. And it takes that understanding and being willing to get out of your comfort zone to challenge yourself. So remember, Black is beautiful. And most importantly, life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react. He who says he can and he who says he cannot are usually both correct. Take care of your physical body, be grateful, and give and receive love. Thank you, and remember to like and subscribe. Have a good day.